Today, I'm going to show you how to install this Synology file server. It comes without any hard drives. This model lets you install two hard drives, one here and another here. This model is probably the most basic model, the DS223J. You can only add up to two hard drives. To let you know how small this thing is, here's the stapler and the power plug that comes along with it. Yeah, this thing is crazy small, yet still very powerful. In the back, you can plug in the power cord. There's two USB 3 plugs and a gigabit ethernet connection. There's a small hole to lock the unit up to secure it in case somebody just walk away with it. For the longest time, I was very reluctant to get a Synology just because it was so overpriced. You can actually build your own with a Raspberry Pi. But of course, simplicity, usability, and looking nice doesn't even come close to this Synology if you're planning to build your own. The normal price for this unit is about $200. I got it on sale for about $150 during Amazon sale, and I have no doubt it will be about $150 during Black Friday that's coming up. If you're a hardcore tech person, chances are you probably don't want this. Most likely you want something with like 6 bay expansion for 6 hard drives. Like I said earlier before, this is just 2 hard drive, and it's perfectly fine for most home usage. Perfect for installing at your parents house for instance. Let's start off first with hardware installation. So with the back facing you, hold steady with your left hand and then slide it off with the right hand. The cover just slips right off. Now with the hard drive facing upward and the back of the hard drive is facing the back of the units, all you have to do is slide in and it will dock right in to the SATA port in the back of the hard drive. Once the drives are docked, go ahead and secure it with 4 screws per hard drive. So they give you a total of 8 screws. Once all of the 8 screws are in position, go ahead and slide the cover back on. To secure the back cover, all you need is two screws, one on the top and one on the bottom. And that's it. I don't know why there are extra screws, but it is what it is. Now let's power this thing on. Go ahead and plug the power brick in, the ethernet cable that's also provided. Plug the Ethernet cable into your network and plug the power cord into your outlet and we're ready to go. Everything is now plugged in. On the front, there's a power button. Go ahead and press it and power it on. With the blue light blinking, you know it's good. Alright, now to find this on your network. Go ahead and type in find.synology.com and it will find the server on your network. There we go. It found the uh, Synology on your network. Go ahead and click on connect. I didn't read the agreement, but I click on next, click on continue, go ahead and click on install, automatically, and then next. All data would be deleted, that's fine, click on continue. The hard drive is brand new, that's why. It's getting the hard drive ready. Once it's done, click on start. Give your device a name, an admin name and a password associated with it. If you give it a weak password, it's not going to like it. And there's no way for you to click on next. So give it a strong password and then click on next. I'm going to let it automatically install update. So I click on next. Click on create because this is a very useful tool. You can access the Synology from anywhere in the world. So go ahead and use your own personal email or log in with Google. Myself, I'm going to use my own email account. If you're using your own email account, it's going to give you a verification code. So wait for the verification code and then enter it in here. On this next page, I just fill in whatever I want. I doubt if it matters, but of course the password matters. So choose a very hard password to enter. Go ahead and create an ID that you can use so that you can connect anywhere in the world. And then click on submit. It's going to give you a URL so that you can paste in your web browser 
or use on a mobile app. I highly recommend copying this into a notepad or something so that later on you can use it. Click on OK when you're done and then click on Submit. All of these are totally optional, but because they're so useful, I'm going to check them all and then click on Submit. And there you go, you're all done. Right now it's asking for a, an option to install some app for your photos, but I'm just going to click No Thanks. You can install yourself later on. Best of all, Synology lets you do two-factor authentication. I'm going to skip it for now, but you should definitely turn it on for your own self. Now let's proceed with setting up your hard drive. Click on Create Now. Click on Start. Synology gives you a bunch of options for RAID. If you're new to the game and don't know what you're doing, leave it at the default option, which is SHR. It works perfectly fine. And then click on Next when you're ready. Myself, I'm going to be using RAID 1. Select the two hard drives. Next. Click on Perform and then click on Next. Click on Max and then click on Next. I'm leaving this at the default, so click on Next. Click on Apply and then click on OK. Let's close the window and go to File Station. Click on OK. Give it a name. I'm going to name it Drive 1. Click on Next. I'm not going to encrypt it, but maybe you should. Just because if you encrypt it, it's going to slow down the hard drive. I'm going to skip this and click on Next. Next. Lastly, you can give users permission to access this folder or not, and then click on Apply. Don't worry, you can always change the permissions later. If you ever need to, you can always create new users as well, and then adjust their permissions later on. So let's go ahead and create another user. It's critical that you create users and give them permissions. That way, some people can access all of the folders as needed. Sometimes, maybe your kids, you don't want them accessing your text files, for instance. So create a totally different folder for them, and don't let them have permissions to access that folder in the first place. Once the password is created, confirm the password, and then click on Next when you're ready. So here you can see that I'm allowing admin users to access all of the files. And then click on Next. It's interesting to note that there are several apps available in Synology by default. So I'm just going to allow it all. Now that we got the hard drives created, the users and the folders permissions, let's try accessing this Synology on the network. So open any folder up in the address bar. Go ahead and type in slash slash and then the IP address. Enter in any of the users that you created. And then to make it easier, just remember my credentials, so that way you can access that folder anytime later on in, in the future. And bam, you're in Drive 1. Drive 1 was the folder that you created earlier in Synology. Loading or copying a file into this folder is ridiculously fast. My desktop is hardwired. Of course, the Synology is hardwired. So uploading this 5 megabyte file took less than like a second. Now let's map the Synology to a network drive. So click on Map Network Drive. Assign it a letter, any letter that's available. The folder, we can always paste it in, which is the slash slash IP address and then the folder. Or you can just go back to the folder, copy the address bar, and then paste it in. Click on Finish, and there you go. Now you got a drive M. Use it as you normally would with any drive letters. So instead of saving files on a C drive, now you can save it on the M drive. Pretty slick. You can always verify by opening up a Word document and then saving it onto this M drive. Looking good. Accessing your M drive is pretty easy when you're in the house, right? But what if you are in like another country or across the world in China, for instance? I'm going to show you how to access it anywhere in the world via Tailscale. So go ahead and open Tailscale up and log in to your account or create one if you haven't already. Now, let's jump back into your Synology. Click on Package Center. If this is your first time, you have to agree to it and click on OK. In the search option, go ahead and type in Tailscale. Click on Install. Go ahead and install it and then click on Done. When it's done installing, go ahead and go into the Install tab. Click on Open. 
Click on Login. Now your Synology is successfully connected to your TailScale VPN network. Very slick, very easy. This is my TailScale dashboard, and here you can see the NAS and the desktop that I'm connected in. Be mindful of the IP address that's assigned in your TailScale. So in this instance, the address is 100.78.221.132. Previously, you saw how I created the letter M to access the Synology locally. Now that we have it on TailScale network, we can access it anywhere in the world. So go ahead and map the network drive once more. This time, choose another letter, such as letter T. And instead of using the IP address of 192.168.1.25, use this address of 100.78.221.132. After that's done, you can access the T drive from anywhere in the world. It's crazy simple, crazy fast, and super secure. Finally, if you are using something to back up to the cloud, such as Google Drive or OneDrive, go ahead and install this app, Cloud Sync. Find it and click on Install. Once it's installed, go ahead and open it up. I'm using Google Drive, so I'm going to click on Google Drive. And then Next. Sign in my Google Drive. Click on Allow. Click on Agree. Select the local folder that you want to back it up. In the remote path, choose the Google Drive folder that you want to upload to. Create a folder if you have to. I'm naming mine Synology. Click on OK. Find a Synology folder. And then click on Select. If you want it to be super secure, go ahead and checkbox the data encryption. This will encrypt the data as you're uploading it to the cloud. I'm not going to enable any scheduling because I wanted to synchronize right away. I right, hope you found this tutorial helpful on how to get your Synology up and running, accessing it remotely from anywhere in the world, and backing up into a cloud service like Google Drive. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.